I just realised my microphone is not plugged in. So there we go. So I am back. Views for you tonight. Let me just make sure my mic. Perfect. Okay, so you guys should be able to hear me now. Um, I had asked everyone not in the U.S. for you to post links to non-U.S. brands because I get asked all the time um, what brands that I recommend or don't recommend and a lot of you guys not from the U.S. don't get proper attention. So I asked you which brands that you want me to review and this is a continuation. All of these can be found on my Using Essential Oils Safely YouTube channel that's relatively new so there's no, not a lot of subscribers at this moment but that's where I'm putting all of these up. Um, so the next brand that I will be reviewing is a suggestion from Marie Claire. So let me show you my screen. I'm going to click on the link she provided and I 99% of these that you've been giving me I have never been to and this is completely new to me. So I am going to show you. You will see my very first reactions for all of these. Um, and there's certain things that I look for when I assess a brand and that's what you will find out. So whether or not this is a brand that is even of interest to you or if you're not, this is an Australian brand it appears to me, um, .au. So even if you are in the US, some of the information that you will be able to um, hear me talk about are applicable for really any brand. So these are the things that you want to make sure that you are looking for, no matter which brand that you are reviewing. So I love checking out Bergamot because what I'm looking for, I just wanna grab my book and have that handy in case I need to check it out. Um, what I'm looking for is if the company um, has safety information available on their website, specifically if they are letting you know that this is a phototoxic essential oil. So that's what I'm looking for here. Um, this is cold pressed, not steam distilled. So this is a phototoxic essential oil and it's good for you to be aware of that. Um, and it does look like they have it listed. Caution, phototoxic, application to skin may increase sensitivity to sunlight, wait with sun exposure for 12 hours after applying, adult use only. Now, technically this is safe for all ages. Um, technically it's up to about 18 hours after you apply and you can get away with using bergamot as long as you use less than a 0.4% dilution, which is a pretty low dilution. Um, fortunately, bergamot is good for so many things inhaled inhalation is typically going to be your best way to use bergamot for calming and for sedative purposes so you don't generally need to worry about applying it to the skin and having it be phototoxic anyways but i'm glad to see they do have that warning on here so let's take a look at i will do their blends as well i want to check out some of their singles first and then we will come back i see a calm blend to see how they are formulating those um, blends here is carrot seed. This is an essential oil that is not safe for use during pregnancy. So I'm curious to know if they have that here. Um, I'm not seeing any safety. Let's check out specifications. So let's look a little bit more carefully because I'm just kind of skimming. So it appears they have a, a typical description. They're explaining how to use for massaging um, they're not giving advice on topical application, topical maxes. Um, it is great for skincare, absolutely amazing. Um, I wouldn't bother diffusing it. It's not a very pleasant aroma and it's basically going to be the best for skincare and not really um, any other issues like respiratory system. It's really not going to be helpful for that. Um, I'm just curious to know. So suggested uses, I saw this on the other one. I don't know if this is standard for all of the essential oils that they have on their website, and we will find out in a moment. Um, some companies have a standard, this is how many drops you add, this, you know, for skincare, vaporizer, or diffuser, massage, bath. Um, I've seen websites have this exact same information, same drops and everything for every single essential oil. So that is something you want to see change because it will depend on the essential oil, how much that you can actually use topically. Some have topical maxes that you have to keep in mind. Um, some really shouldn't be in the bath. So let me just take a look at this. So 10 to 15 drops is a little bit high. Um, I usually suggest five to 10. 
that could be fine in a large open area. Um, skincare, one to two percent is a good guideline to have. I generally suggest one for face, two for body for general purpose. Um, massage, similar, bath, five to ten drops. You generally want to stick to about five drops in your bath. You generally do not want more than that. Um, okay, so this is their standard disclaimer here. They are suggesting to dilute first, which is good. Okay, and that's just cover your butt right there. The intended for cosmetic, external, and aromatherapy use only, not for internal consumption, medical applications. Now, we know essential oils are therapeutic, but they are, you know, covering their butt, which is good. I respect that. Um, okay, so let's pick another one here. Let's see, we have cinnamon bark. So let's click on here. Cinnamon has a lot of issues, cinnamon bark and leaf both have lots of safety issues. It has to be used very, very carefully. So it does appear as if they have the exact same suggested uses. So this is definitely not something that you want to apply as high as one and 2%, which yes, I understand is actually rather low, um, generally speaking, but cinnamon bark and cinnamon leaf both have very, very low topical maxes, 0 0.6 and 0 0.01. So you wanna be very, very careful. Um, when using that. Yes, 0.6 for cinnamon leaf, 0.01% for cinnamon bark. Um, I'm also not seeing anything here, which I want to see. I'm looking for them making you aware that this is anticoagulant, which means it can thin the blood, um, which can be a concern for those of you on blood thinners or taking aspirin or prone to nosebleeds. Um, and even if you aren't, it can still thin your blood, um, but especially if you are in those situations where you may be about to have surgery, um, just had surgery, and you need to heal, you need to clot, um, then that may be something you need to stay away from, and I'm not seeing anything there letting you know. Also, cinnamon bark is not safe for use during pregnancy um, or breastfeeding. So let's see what they have here about eucalyptus. This. Let's look at radiata or radiata. Um, let's see here. Let's see if they have any. Okay, so I'm seeing the same exact suggested uses, but what I'm not seeing is that this is for ages 10 and above. I'm just seeing a bunch of benefits here. Um, nothing to do with, you know, avoid using with um, around children under the age of 10 years old. So I'm not seeing that. Let's see if they have the phototoxic warning on grapefruit like they did for bergamot. And they do, so that's good because that is phototoxic if you're using more than 4% on your skin. Let's see jasmine. Jasmine has a very, very low topical max. It's under 1%. Let's see if it mentions that. It does not, because in that case, for skincare, massage, and bath, you are going to go over your topical max, and that is not going to be safe for you. Um, it can irritate the skin and cause redness if you use too much. Um, okay, so lavender is one, one that I want to point out, because lavender is not like lavender. I know the names are pretty similar, but they have different safety issues. So let me just um, flip on over to lavender. So lavender is one that is anticoagulant, which means it can thin your blood. So same thing, like I said, with cinnamon, aspirin, blood thinner, surgery. Um, it also has contraindications if you are using diabetes medication. Um, that's generally only if you consume the lavender, um, which I don't recommend. It's not safe for pets and it has, ex it has um, well, that's the low topical maxes for the absolute, not the essential oil. So yeah, you want to be super careful um, to make sure that when you are using lavender, you understand the safety issues because it's not the same as lavender. Let's take a look at, I usually click on lemon and lime, but they did good on the other phototoxic ones. I'm not going to click on that right now because I don't want to be wasting everybody's time here all night clicking on every single last one. Another one I like to check out is peppermint. Now I'm not seeing any ages. I'm not even saying do not use if pregnant specifically. It probably says it here in their generic, um, their generic warning. Actually, I'm not even seeing that here. 
Yeah, that's actually surprising. So I am not seeing anything typically with these general warnings here that are on everything. Um, you typically see, ask your doctor if you are pregnant or nursing, um, pregnant or breastfeeding, yeah, pregnant or breastfeeding. Um, if you are using with children, like keep away from children, kind of that. I'm not even seeing that here. Um, so that's really interesting. So there's nothing here safety wise with kids. So peppermint is one that's for ages six and above. I'm not seeing any warnings about that whatsoever. Um, so the most I'm seeing so far from this website is that they are flagging for phototoxicity. Um, star anise is not one that I recommend at all. It has a lot of safety issues. Um, I don't even recommend an age, just like avoid this one. Don't even bother using it. Um, it's anticoagulant, potentially carcinogenic. It's a reproductive hormone modulator. Do not use a pregnant or breastfeeding. Um, okay, so I am seeing a caution here because not all of these are having cautions. So it's estrogenic, so please avoid use in pregnancy while breastfeeding and for those who have endometriosis and with children under five. So at least there's something there. Um, yeah, so the thing with estrogenic, I mean, that can be a little bit confusing. Essential oils don't actually contain hormones, but if you have endometriosis, if you've had um, estrogen dependent cancers, sometimes, um, sometimes your body can take that essential oil and, um, it kind of can act almost hormone like in a way it's, it's pretty confusing, but essential oils do not contain hormones. You just want to be super careful if you are in that situation, um, to be very careful of the essential oils that could be reproductive hormone modulators. Alrighty, so let's take a look at some of the blends. I did see a couple here. So let's take a look at the Calm Blend and see how they're formulating that. So we have Mandarin, Lavandin. See, I really prefer to avoid the Lavandin and just stick with Lavender, but we have Mandarin, Lavandin, Lemon, Lavender, Marjoram, and Chamomile. So this, generally speaking, could be a good calming blend. Generally, Lemon is um, more stimulating and great for energy, but as it's blended with these other ones, it may be just fine. Um, the thing I'm seeing here is the marjoram oil. Sweet marjoram is fine for all ages and kids and pregnancy and all of that, but Spanish marjoram does have some safety issues and there's nothing here indicating, there's no botanical name or anything indicating which one this is. And also due to the lemon, this could be phototoxic if applied to the skin. So I would um, try to figure out which marjoram that is, but this is something for calm. Um, it's best used inhaled anyways and not applied to the skin. So let's see, I think I use, yes, so there's a happy blend here. So these should be energizing, uplifting essential oils. I shouldn't see any sedatives in here. Um, sweet orange, grapefruit, lemon, bergamot, geranium, patchouli, and ylang ylang. So this would work. This sounds like a good blend. Um, again, caution with phototoxicity with the grapefruit, the lemon, the bergamot. Um, very low topical max for ylang ylang. Um, patchouli is anticoagulant as well, by the way. It's one of those we don't always think of as anticoagulant, but it is. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Inhalation for that would be best. And I don't know, are there any other blends here or not? Okay, so here's a relax blend. So I don't know if this is intended for sleep or, or you know, they already have a calm blend. Um, let's see, lemon, lavender, lavender, bergamot, chamomile, mandarin, patchouli. This is a lot like their other calm blend. So I'm not sure why they have two different ones. Um, let's see, what else do they have? Okay, so I'm not seeing any other blends. So carry oils, let me just make sure there's nothing here. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed my review. I will be back in a few minutes after this uploads to YouTube to do the next one suggested from members. If you are interested in a copy of Essential Oil Safety Files, you can find that at uboslibrary.com and you can use the information in the book, whether it's the print book, the online version, or the ebook to do your own assessments on websites and you know what the safety is because this particular website did not have a lot of safety information on it and you want to make sure that you are using your essential oils safely. So I will see you in a few minutes.